Good morning everybody. Today we're going to be showing you how to do a replacement for the gasket and the seal on a 2001 to 2009 Volvo S60 uh, turbo oil return line. <laughs> um, on the bottom of the turbo, one of the common things that you have with this because of the heat and everything, is there's a little gasket right here that has a tendency to um, where it squishes and it uh, wears and becomes permeable and so forth and the oil will start slowly leaking out of this or on the part of the tube where it comes off the bottom of the turbo and drains back into the oil pan the little oops the little seal that seals that tube where it goes into the oil pan can start leaking too it's pretty common and this thing has 175,000 miles on it so we're going to be replacing it today um, it's supposed to be a pretty easy job. Never done it before, but we're going to see if we can muddle our way through it. This is not the all-wheel drive model, so I don't have that Haldex or whatever it's called um, piece for front, uh, for uh, splitting my power to the rear wheels. So this sh I should be able to get to everything pretty easy. Uh, the kit that I got from FCP Euro comes with bolts to replace the two that go in for the uh, oil return line the gasket and the seal and some brake clean uh, parts cleaner so that I can spray the area off make sure the gasket area is nice and clean and all that before we get started though there's a couple of things we want to do because I'll be spraying this and because stuff could drip down in my face because I'll be underneath it I want safety glasses we'll want to get the car up in the air I'm going to uh, jack it up on both sides you can use ramps if you've got them I don't so I'm going to use jacks with jack stands on each side. Never rely on one device, always use two. Uh, I've got the emergency brake on that works beautifully on this car. When the brake's on, those rear wheels are not turning. Um, I'm gonna get my little LED work light set up so I can get it up under here, and I'm gonna get this off and go get on some things I don't mind getting dirty. The engine, obviously, you don't wanna do this while the engine is hot because that turbo and exhaust and everything is gonna be boiling hot. Uh, this car has been sitting all night. I started it up just enough to move it over from the corner of the garage to the center of the garage, and that was 20 minutes ago, so it, whatever little bit of heat that I generated during that time will be gone. So let's go get changed and we'll get started. All right, as you can see, I've got the car up in the air. I've got it on jacks and jack stands on both sides. I have the air dam removed, and if you look right here, this wet spot, that's what gave me an indication in the first place that something was wrong. That is from oil dripping down from that return line. So if you take your air dam off, turn my light over here so you can see it and see that puddle showing up like that, that's probably what's going on. And you've got uh, you know, road dirt and everything that'll stick to that oil as it drips down. Uh, so it should be really obvious and really noticeable. I think I'm going to take um, some soapy water, scrub this down real quick, let this dry, and then we'll get up under the car and take care of the rest. All right, next steps here. I've got my uh, um, thing that I took off, my air dam cleaned off. I've got the cap off of that. When I remove that coolant line off of the bottom of the turbo, it's going to leak coolant out, so I need to drain some coolant from the radiator and if you look up under the driver's side there's a hole right here there's a six millimeter little petcock in there that just turns by hand that you've got to loosen up and you'll see it start to drain here so I'm going to drain that into some buckets here <laughs> I'm making a mess so I'll get back with you when this is done we're up under the car and you can take a look and see what we've got here um, my glasses are fogging up so see if I can see this this is the line that we need to replace the stuff on we've got two screws to remove or two bolts and this line just drains right back down into the engine right down here. 
um, and that's where the seal is that goes around there and that's where right there is the um, gasket that we've got to replace this is a coolant uh, line we've got to unbolt that we don't have to remove it all the way just be able to move it kind of out of the way a little bit because um, this has two crush wings rings on the other side and it can be finicky getting it back up in there first thing we got to do is remove this though and that's a 10 millimeter so let's get to it don't know if I can film that and hold this at the same time so I'm going to remove that separately all right next item is to remove that bolt right there on the side of that that is a 17 millimeter and I got my oh I don't think I'm going to need an extension <laughs> let me take my extension off hang on all right, I do not need an extension, so let's see how easy that is to come off. That's going to be a little bit tight, so I'm going to need two hands to break that loose. Let me get that broken loose. I've got my... Well, head moved out of the way and a oil cloth or a rag underneath me, so that whatever drips out can be caught by that. Let me break that loose. I'll come right back to you. All right, I got that broken loose. It wasn't too bad. I just needed two hands on it. You can see I have got a couple of drips coming out. So make sure my towel is underneath there. draining quite a lot faster now and I just need to be able to wiggle that out of the way I don't need to necessarily remove it so there we go just like that so I'm gonna let that drain out there's a lot coming out so let me get a bucket all right that appears to mostly have stopped draining so my next action is to get that bolt and the one on the other side out which is a t something or other t30 i believe yep t30 and see how easily that breaks loose there and i might have too long of an extension for this side so let me get a shorter extension and get that off there hang on a sec all right so that is loose sorry for the shakiness it is really hard to do this by yourself under here so get and my glasses keep fogging up on me so there is one put that bolt aside see if i got the other one loosened up enough i do There it comes out. We're gonna pull this loose. There we go. And I'm gonna wiggle it. Out of the other end. Ooh, I may have to take that completely off. That is a in there a good bit. Let's see if I can pull it loose on this end and wiggle that out. Right, I'm going to need two hands again, so I'll get back to you here. Got to wiggle that out there. I might have to take that coolant drain off completely. All right, I got it wiggled out here. That's just your standard oil return line. It just The oil just flows down into there, back into the oil pan. And because this has been setting overnight, except for two minutes of running this morning, there's not much in it, not much stripped out. Now, notice the gasket it's I just broke it it's crispy crunchy that's what's causing part of my problems it's old 
instead of like the new one is flexible see it bends and it has a nice little tab I can hold on to as I'm putting things together so that um, you can get it back in there that's really well designed this has got to go on here and I see this stayed in the engine so I'm gonna have to get up there and pull that out <laughs> make sure you get that out so let me get up under there and see if I can get that out real quick all right, there's the old one, and all I did was just rent, gently get up under there with a little small screwdriver, just use the tip to pry it out. So let me see if I can set up the camera here, and uh, we'll get this put back together. All right. So... I want to get this nice and clean. Take a rag. Make sure you got that nice and clean. And that looks good. And I'm going to do, before I do anything else, I'm going to clean this side up. Make sure it looks good. I'm going to take um, my brake. I can't even see it. Um, take my brake cleaner, spray this surface down real quick, and then take a razor blade and just slice across that to make sure there's no gunk on there. And I'm going to do the same on the turbo side, which is why they, uh, in the FCP Euro kit, they send you that uh, carb cleaner uh, or brake parts cleaner. So let me get that done real quick. I got the surface here nice and clean, and I got the surface underneath nice and clean the, on the turbo. So I'm going to take this out of the package. Notice it is not directional. I'm going to slip that. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is put just a little drop of oil on here first, and then I will slip that back on. Let me get a drop of oil here. Got a thing that's open already? No, I'll just open a new one. Got that. Put that one nice and easy. There we go. That is on. Okay, so now we can go reassemble it up under the car. Put this back into the engine block and put this there with my two new bolts and my new gasket and uh, we'll see you back up under there see if we can do this all right I'm trying to position my phone under here so that uh, I can work on this well you guys take a what look too. make sure I got all the stuff off I'm gonna put this back down into, let's see if I can wiggle this in first maybe. Let's see how I'm gonna do this. Put this up in here. Unfortunately, I think it's going to have to come out. Set that out of the way. That way I can push this. Well, maybe if I get the drain tube in first then I can maneuver this in this is the hardest part of the whole process right here and that drain tube doesn't feel like it's going down in there all the way which is why this isn't lining up
So let me take a better look at that. Yeah, that is the hard part. The rubber seal on this other end seems like it's having a hard time going in. So I can't position this to where it needs to be. Let me play around with that just a little bit. We'll get back to you. Whew, holy cow. Um, that was rough. I, you really have to push this pipe down hard to get that into the block there. But I got this started now. And I'm just getting in, the, in their hand tight right now. And that tab to uh, line that up really does help. Okay, so. Phone's kind of in the way, but you get the idea. I'm getting these tightened down, so. I'm gonna get this out of the way and get those tight. All right, I got those suckers in. Now I'm putting my uh, coolant return line, or coolant line. I don't know if it's return or which direction the coolant flow is, but I'm tightening that back down. That's gotta be in there pretty tight, so. I need two hands to finish. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's pretty good right there. So we're going to call that. Next thing we need to do is put our coolant back in, start it up, and see if we have any leaks. All righty, she's uh, running. She's uh, almost warmed up completely. My tank is a little bit over full right now. And I actually, in my bucket here, I still have a little bit of uh, antifreeze left. Had I thought about it at the time, I should have got some new antifreeze and changed out the antifreeze while I was at it. Uh, this isn't in bad shape at all. This is factory antifreeze in this car after 175,000 miles and it's still good. But um, it's easy to drain this antifreeze, so at some point I'm gonna swap it out. I've already checked up under the um, hood before I put the uh, air dam back on. I have no leaks of any kind. So now I'm just going to uh, let it sit here a couple of minutes. I'm gonna go clean up and then uh, we're gonna take it for a ride. But that's it, it's, uh, it's not that difficult. It's a little time consuming, a lot more time consuming than I thought it would be. But, um, it's not difficult to do. Uh, it's just, you know, it's a tight space when you're up under the hood like that and it's fiddly. But um, nothing that your average shade tree mechanic can't do uh, in a couple of hours pretty easily. Um, I did, if you take a look there, just as I was at the end, that little clamp piece on those lines, I was putting that back on and as I was done, I was looking away and I dropped my wrench right across the bridge of my nose. So. You know, I guess it's not a good, uh, a good project if you don't hurt yourself. So hopefully you got something out of this, and um, we'll talk to you later.